The Strategic Transportation Plan and the Master Plan of Arterial Highways uh, really provides an opportunity for each city to see how they fit into the larger puzzle of the Gateway Cities subregion. How their plans and their city's traffic affect the larger Gateway Cities region. Uh, the analytical and modeling tools that were built as part of the STP help them understand that from an impact standpoint, but the, the data that's out there as well gives them a much greater appreciation of the, the region as a whole, understanding the future and how we can improve those arterial performances and their key role in that region as their city. People just don't live and work in that in a small geographic area. They, ha they, they have to get somewhere, they have to go somewhere for recreation, to school, to work. So understanding the, the logistics of how people get from point A to point B and C, D, E, and F is important. The arterials throughout the Gateway Cities are highly constrained you know, through development, so adding new lane capacity is really not an option. And that's what leads us to looking at smart corridors to accommodate extra throughput without having those right-of-way impacts. When you look at uh, an individual development, or an intersection for that matter, you have to know how it interplays with everything else. We're going to be evaluating the level of service and congestion at hundreds of intersections within the Gateway Cities area, testing them for their congestion levels, level of service, and what could be done to improve them. We have the ability, using the tool that's been developed, uh, which includes 2,000 intersections, to assess any of those 2,000 intersections at the detailed level. Uh, to obtain traffic counts, we have uh, actual traffic signal information in the model for each of those locations. We have actual geometric information in terms of the length of the turn lanes, the number of lanes, how the signal operates. Uh, general traffic flow parameters so we can assess using these tools each intersection or more importantly a corridor level assessment of the intersections and how they work from one intersection to the next and for a stretch of segment for a mile or several miles. Traffic modeling uh, of the STP will help the cities including Southgate to strategize and actually enhance their own transportation planning and working with neighboring cities to connect the dots. Smart management for arterials also involve signal synchronization and other kinds of communication techniques to allow operators of cars to understand where congestion is going to be so that they can make proper routing decisions. Farson Atlantic intersection is a major intersection connecting two major arterials and with the 40 to 60,000 vehicles, average daily truck traffic, the intersection has been widened to relieve congestion from impact of the 710 to bring them to a low level of service D or better, which is acceptable level of service. This would help avoid delays for motorists, again, get them to their destination faster and safer. You're evaluating a development project, say in our case at the Atlantic and Firestone intersection. It was being evaluated and designed by both the city and the developers so that it could take advantage of a future transit station across the street. So it could take advantage of the, of the road improvements that are there. So while at the same time we're creating uh, plans for things that will be built 10, 15, 20 years down the road, we're also trying to create new development that's adaptive enough that can take advantage of these new plans in the future. We're reaching out and meeting with every single city and talking about the corridors and the data that we've collected. So for each identified corridor that has uh, issues of congestion or mobility or other performance measure issues, we'll be coming up with a set of recommended improvements. We as planners all pretty much have a fairly good grasp of our own individual cities. We don't have the grand view of the region and this enables us to understand the region and its impacts uh, to a much higher level, it allows us to be more efficient. The information is more readily available, it is updated, uh, and we're part of that process. So it's not only something that we tap into and have to learn and understand, it's something we're part of and we help create. So we have an intimate knowledge of not only what's happening in our city, but as committee members, as members of the Gateway Cities and so forth, 
not only the planners and the professional engineers, but the politicians also have an insight into how everything works. So they're intimately aware of the nuances of the region it's, and the impacts of everything that's going on here. I think the cities are very excited about having enhanced data, some preliminary design drawings, and enhanced tools that when they're going after a competitive grant for a, an improvement project, a lot of that preliminary work has already been done as part of the transportation plan and they can just insert that into their grant application. That's a lot less burden on them and it enhances their chances of getting that money. Funding for the arterial system is extremely competitive um, at the city level and so what we're doing, what we're providing to the cities will give them the ammunition, the tools to be able to seek funding and identify what their problems are on their arterial system today and in the future. We really don't pay attention to where we cross a jurisdictional boundary. And if we really want to get at the root of congestion and solving it, uh, we need to think across jurisdictional boundaries for operational improvements that can address those issues. You know, we're working at making traffic flow well, smoothly, and that really ties to livability and getting to your destination quicker and safely.